Do you say you need to exercise, but you're still not doing it? Do you exercise, but it's just not con something consistent that you're sticking with? Or are you walking, riding a Peloton, but you're still not really getting the results you want? There is a way to exercise to expedite your weight loss. There is exercise that gets you results. This is what I'm going to share today in this episode. If this is something you really struggle with, then I highly suggest going to my Facebook group. The link is in the show notes. Watch my free training. It's an hour long training about exercise. We can go in deep about this to help you understand your body. It's pinned at the top of that group. After you listen to today's episode, go there, watch it, and understand that you can have the results you're looking for. I want to read to you what Stacy wrote. Stacy joined me in my 12 week Trinity Transformation Weight Loss Program. She was struggling with exercise. She started doing what I'm going to share with you today. And in only four days, she sent me this. Good morning, Andrea. I've been sleeping beautifully, having weird dreams I don't remember, waking up with a positive attitude. This is new. Even when I wake up to go pee, I go back to sleep with ease. I started this transformation at 232 pounds and now I weigh 225.6. Whoop, thank you, feeling jazz. And it's only the beginning of day four. So stay tuned with me. You can have this too. Hey, woman of God, are you sick of fad diets that only get you temporary results? Are you looking for a simple, foundational, faith-based weight loss framework that will fit into your busy day so it becomes a lifestyle? Are you ready to break free from binge eating, overeating, sugar addiction, self-sabotage, and the battle with your scale? It is time to let the chain breaker Jesus move mightily into your weight loss journey. I'm Andrea Lynn. I am so excited that you're here with me on Christian Women's Weight Loss. I remember what it felt like to be 75 pounds overweight, exhausted, overwhelmed, riddled with poor self-esteem, low self-image and unworthiness until I was radically saved by Jesus and he made everything new. With 20 years of experience and numerous certifications in fitness and nutrition, I'm here to teach you everything I know about food and fitness while making faith your primary drive as a busy Christian woman wanting to lose weight and keep it off. If you're ready to let the Holy Spirit transform you from the inside out while getting your body, which is God's vessel, healthy so you can rise up and live out the calling that God has on your life, you're in the right place. May the Lord give you ears to hear, eyes to see, a heart that's pleasing to Him, along with a body that will be transformed for His glory. Let's dive in. Okay, let's dive in. I know this is a probably a dreaded topic for many of you. Exercise seems to be the one nemesis <laughs> that you struggle with and don't want to do, want to do. You have this battle that goes on inside, right? And I have to say, I wish I could say to you, I kind of relate, but I grew up, I started dancing at five years old. So I like exercise, which is probably why I ended up becoming a personal trainer. But I, re I really never felt like I didn't like it. When I was young, um, like I said, I started dancing at five. And then I just danced so all my years, basically, and even into college. Um, so I was always moving. And I wasn't just in one dance class a week. As I got older, I was in tap. I was in jazz. I was in modern. I was in ballet. I You named it. I was in it. So I was probably at the dance studio you know, five days a week. And what happened for me is when I was struggling emotionally, 
I would go outside. You could totally ask my mom this. She she still to this day laughs like, oh, there's my kid running around outside. But what I, what I would do, two things, either when I was struggling emotionally, I would go outside and I would go on our back porch and I would just dance, put on music. At the time, I was like really digging Olivia Newton-John. Oh, that dates me. <laughs> But I would put on music and I would just dance and dance. There was, I was trees around. I was, you know, grew up in apple orchard. So I would dance to the trees until I felt better. And then there were also times where I would go outside and I would run laps literally around my house until my legs collapsed. And then I was like, okay, I feel better. I can move along. And, you know, like I said, my mom says, yep, she would look out the window and there I was just going so fast around my house. I, I always think, what was she thinking? I'm going to ask her actually one of these days. So here's the thing. I used exercise to help me, but obviously it was not a healthy way to cope, right? But I want to say to you that you're not alone, that the majority of women that I have come in contact with and you know, if you know my story, I've been in the health and fitness industry for over 20 years and as a personal trainer. And I probably want to say out of those 20 years, there's maybe five that I can remember that really said, I like exercise. I can do it all the time. It's no big deal. But the rest of the women, now we're talking thousands and thousands, right? It's been over 20 years. All said, I don't really like exercise or I battle with exercise. I know I need to do it, but I'm not doing it. Okay. So you're not alone. I just want to say that because I don't want you to feel like it's you. There's something wrong with you. There's nothing wrong with you. The other thing is, is that there's factors involved here, right? It's like, did you grow up with exercise? Did you grow up watching, you know, your grandparents exercise or your parents exercise? If not, then think about it. You weren't raised in that environment where it was nurtured. And, you know, for many of us, our grandparents, for me, my grandparents were farmers, so they didn't really need to exercise per se. They were very active exercising as a farmer, hands on deck, you know, working hard all day long, every day. Very different story. But I know that, you know, my parents were um, not consistent with exercise. I remember my mom saying, I'm going to the gym and then she'd fall off and I didn't see her go to the gym for a long time. So that's a factor here that I need you to really remember. And also, you know, where do you live? Um, What people around you, were they exercising? It just, there's lots of um, data that shows where we grew up in that state, in that country, you know, determines also if we're putting exercise as a priority, such as there's data now that basically shows, you know, Montana, people in Montana, this is data that I found online, I think was even the CDC website. So this is not my data, but it was like people in Montana don't move or exercise as much as people in Colorado. Okay, so that comes into play. So take some of that guilt and burden off yourself right now and know that you can change this, okay? There's a lot of statistics that show, and I just looked at statistics in the U.S., but it it says that the percentage of adults 18, 18 and older meeting the physical activity guidelines for aerobic activity is 46.9%. 46.9%, that's not even half. Okay, and then it said that the percentage of adults 18 and older that meet both aerobic activity and muscle strengthening activity is 24.2%. The numbers are astronomically low. So we're going to change this, right? Yes, 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 yes. You're saying yes. Shake your head. Yes. Give me a high five in the air. (laughs) What makes you not exercise? So many times I hear, I'm just too busy, Andrea. I just don't have the time. Is that you? And or, and or exercising, you know, doesn't always give me the results that I'm looking for. So why bother? 
Matter of fact, I'm sorry, mom, I love you to death if she's listening, but she brought up something that so many women say she, uh, it was Thanksgiving time two years ago. And I said to my mom and my sister, Hey, let's go for a quick walk around the block. And you know, we went and I was tracking, you know, on my, uh, my tracking app of like how many steps we took and how many calories we burned. And so we get back and I said, Oh, right. So I, we burned like 50 calories and you know, we did all these steps and my mom goes, that's it. It wasn't worth it. <laughs> so can you relate? You probably can relate to that. So you don't think it's worth it. So why bother? Right? The number one mistake I see is this belief that I have to do hours of cardio daily. Okay. If you don't have time, right, your schedule is busy, then you, you're not going to do that. If you're just like, oh my goodness, it feels like I have to do so much for just, you know, burning a few calories, then of course you're going to feel defeated. So why even bother? Can you relate to that? Though cardio has many benefits, we know this, right? It helps your heart strength, it helps your blood, it helps your blood pressure. There's so many benefits and I don't wanna go into that because that's not what this episode is about. But I do want to bring up something from God's word that is really important for you to understand. Going into this, okay? I want you to look at 1 Timothy 4, 8. And it says, For physical training is of some value, but godliness has value for all things, holding promise for both the present life and the life to come. So right here it says, Physical training is of some value, and it holding promise for both this life right now that you're in and the life to come. So many times also as Christian women, we're like, you know what? It doesn't, my physical body doesn't matter. I'm going to get a new body when I'm in heaven. And though that's true, you're also taking off the value of your physical body, which is the vessel of the Holy Spirit, which is the vessel that God is going to use while you're here on this earth. But you're, you're taking that value out of here, your present moment. So we need to say, I mean, if it says it right here in God's word in first Timothy, that physical training has some value. Now, again, it doesn't say, um, you know, you need to, to do so much. It has some. So let's just put that in perspective. Can you just, can you just take that in for me right now that it does have some value and really own that, you know, and really own that as a Christian woman that we need to do what God's word is asking us to do. So I'm either going to say something right now <laughs> that's going to make a lot of you really happy or a lot of you like, oh, I don't know. That's, though cardio has many benefits, like I said, you don't have to spend hours at the gym every day to get the results that you're looking for, okay? Okay. You only need to work out three to four days a week to get results and benefits. Yeah, I said that. You only need to work out three to four days a week to get results and benefits. Now, it's important that you understand this next part. That three to four days a week workouts has to be some form of a metabolic workout. So you need to be doing three to four days a week of metabolic workouts. This is the key to get your metabolism up, burning faster and working for you. Okay. The, the, the good thing is, is that metabolic workouts can be done at home, outside, in a gym, anywhere you want in a campground if you're if you're camping. So that's the great thing about metabolic workouts. And I want to give you a breakdown so that you understand the difference between an hour of cardio, which again is good, but if you don't have time or you don't like exercise, why wouldn't you want to do 3 to 4 days a week 
and you can at least be more consistent with that and get the results, right? Doesn't that make sense? Yes. Okay. So let me break this down for you. Let's look at cardio. If you're doing cardio, let's just say you're doing your cardio, it's 60 minutes, right? An hour. In that 60 minutes time of cardio, you're burning anywhere between 350 to 500 calories. And the afterburn, which is, you know, that your metabolism is still going, you're still burning calories, right? Is only about 10 minutes after you're done. So the total calories per minute is 8.3. Now I want you to look at this or listen to this. You can't look at it, huh? (laughs) You can look at this. Actually, if you go into my Facebook group, this, this whole chart that I'm describing to you right now is in that free training. Okay. So if you want to see the chart for yourself, go watch that free training. The metabolic workouts, if you were to do a metabolic workout, the time is shorter, 45 to 50 minutes. The calorie burn is the same, 350 to 500 calories. Here's the kicker. The afterburn is 48 hours. 48 hours, your metabolism is still working for you, is still revved up. You're getting three times the burn, three times the caloric burn. So you're burning additional calories, 750 calories per minute then is 25 calories per minute. So would you rather burn 8.3 calories a minute or would you rather burn 25 calories a minute? I mean, come on. That's the math there. I don't know about you, but I rather burn 25 calories per minute and not have to do it all the time. And I like exercise, okay? So we need, again, we're, we're training your body or training the metabolism to work smarter and shorter amounts of time. So that's the whole premise of a metabolic workout. Just so you know, if you're, if, you're not, if you're that person that's like, hey, what's the definition of this? Shorter workouts that maximize calorie burn. That is actually the definition of a metabolic workout. So let me give you some, maybe, maybe some of you need more scientific terms. So I grabbed this, um, I found this scientific term or more of a, I would say a term that came from a doctor, Dr. Begum says that the metabolic training refers to exercise that increases the amount of energy stored and released by the body. While all forms of training require energy, metabolic training differs in the way the energy is created in the body and how it is used up by the body for activity, okay? That is the difference. Make sense? So now you're probably thinking, well, what do I do then? (laughs) I want to give you that. Maybe you're new to this. Maybe you're new and you're like, I'm just starting my workouts or I need to get back into it. First suggestion, can you just, you just need to start with 10 minutes and then every week you're going to build upon that. Okay. So let's just say you're beginning, beginner to metabolic workouts haven't worked out in a while. You want to start with just, like I said, 10 minutes, three to four days a week. And let's just say, I'm going to give you an example of something that, so that you can wrap your head around it. You're using your Peloton, your treadmill, or you're walking outside. Okay. So let's just say you've picked one of those. What you want to do is pick up your pace for 30 seconds and then slow down your pace for 10 seconds. That's it. And when I say pick up your pace, it's going to be very different for each one of you because you're all at different levels. Pick up your pace means it's just a little challenging. Okay. Just a, it just a little, it rides on that, on that line of feeling like, Ooh, this is, I feel this. This is a little challenging. It's a little hard. Okay. Just go there. Just go right to that edge and then slow down and then pick it up and then slow down. This is the start of 
your metabolic workout training. Each week, add, if you started out, if you, let's say you start this week and you're like, I'm going to do 10 minutes. Okay. And in that 10 minutes, you can do 30 seconds of picking up your pace and 10 seconds of slowing down your pace. If you're like, oof, that's a lot, then walk normal for five and do five minutes of picking it up and slowing it down. Then the following week, do six minutes. Do you see what I'm saying? Do you see where we're going? The other uh, example I want to give you is that you want, want to increase the number of reps that you perform within the same time duration. So let's just say that you're doing crunches or maybe you're just, you're doing burpees. Yep, that is a move. <laughs> um, let's just say you're doing 20 crunches now and you're like, oh, I, I timed myself and I can do 20 crunches in 30 seconds. So you want to work towards getting in more crunches in 30 seconds and then rest. Or you want to work in getting more burpees in 30 seconds and then rest. And every time you do this, you're building on itself. Remember that you don't want to neglect your form, but you want to keep good form, but increase the intensity. Okay. And this is how you start. Very easy, basic examples of how to get metabolic workouts in and working for you. Doesn't matter if you're just beginning. I have clients that work with me that are in their 80s and we do this. So you could do this too. So the question is that I'm going to ask you is, are you in? Are you willing to try? If it's a yes, then the next question is, when will you start? Pick a day. Pick a day right now. Okay? Hey, God probably already plopped a day in your head. <laughs> Listen to God on this. Now, next question. Third question. There's going to be four questions here. Third question. What three to four days a week will you do it? Okay. So are you going to start with me? Yes. When will you start? God gave you a day. You, something popped in your head. Go with it. Now, I want you to look at the week from that start day and say, what three or four days am I going to do it this in this week? And your week might not be Monday to Sunday. Your week might be Wednesday to Wednesday. That's fine. Okay. What three to four days? Now, next question. Last question. What time will you do it? Why am I asking you all these questions? You have to schedule this in or you're just going to let the ball drop. You have to think of this as, you know, if you have a doctor's appointment, you schedule it in and you go. This is the same thing. I need you to think of it as that type of importance, as that type of, um, it's just necessary. You have to go. You have to do it. So when you pick your date and you pick your days and you pick your time, it's easier to show up and get it done. That's really important to executing. Now, remember, you can go into my Facebook group. The link is here in the show notes. You can watch the full free training in there about exercise. I pinned it to the top. It's either, it's either says featured or pinned. And share with me in there, when will you start so that I can support you, so that other women can support you, so that you guys can all support each other. It's the best way to execute. You know that. So, so many times when you have the support, you execute. You get it done, right? All right. I know that you can do this. I believe that you can do this. You know why? Because God gives you perseverance, self-control. He gives you everything you need to endure. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much. Thank you so much for your grace and your mercy. Thank you so much, Holy Spirit, for stirring the hearts of the women listening today. I just pray, Holy Spirit, that you stir them so much that they no longer throw physical training to the wayside, that they say yes because their body is yours, Holy Spirit, and that revelation is, is absorbed and they really get it so that they know that they're not exercising for any other reason but for you and you alone because your vessel needs to stay strong and healthy for what you're calling them to do. 
I speak the fruits of the spirit over you, woman of God. I speak love. I speak joy. I speak peace. I speak patience and kindness with yourself. I speak goodness. I speak faithfulness. I speak gentleness and self-control over you in Jesus name. Come alive, Holy Spirit. Use her mightily. Give her that strength and that perseverance to endure what is your will. I ask this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Before you go, if you have been transformed or blessed by this, please subscribe, then go to Apple Podcasts and leave me a written review. It is the number one way that you can bless me and get the word out there to other women who are also seeking. Screenshot your favorite episode, share on your social media feeds, be sure to tag me, and I'd love to connect more often, so join my Facebook group. Until next time, remember God says in 1 Corinthians 10.31, so whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. God bless you, my sister in Christ.